Uh, I want you to. Uh, have you have you read the back of this? Um, I have read the back of it at some stage. Do you recall what your nose should be able to smell? Um, there's a slight hint of regret <laughs> with yep. mm-hmm. a little bit of boisterousness. That's exactly what it says. And a little bit of lemon and citrus. Mm. Right. Uh, That's nice. On the palate, what are you what are you what are you getting? There is a bit of like I'm not I'm more of a uh, excuse my French but connoisseur than a connoisseur mm-hmm. when it comes to whiskey. I um I know when it doesn't taste like stock and and when it's a bit sweeter and stuff, which I prefer. Um Like do you really dive into it, like people with wines and like oh yes, mm. I see like a cherry or oh, grape grape picked at the end of its season and no I, I can now appreciate like if there's some vanilla or something. if I taste it and then it says there's this on it then I'm like oh I can actually taste that yeah um, but I'm, I'm not at a point where I can go oh I can taste this and that there yeah. might be some orange or ginger or something but, like that you know I feel like that for me I totally agree like read it or know what it is and then make the connections but I feel like could it be a complete crock of shit totally it's yeah. like it's like star signs when people, you know, if if you if we had today's star signs and I read you out, well, are you a Leo? What are you? Um, look, I'm a Capricorn, and Cap- yeah, but I, I often don't stick with star signs because I'm stubborn like a Capricorn. <laughs> exactly. But if I was to read you, pick out three. One was a Capricorn. One was today's Scorpion. Whatever the other ones are. Yeah. Charming would you be able to pick which one? You, obviously not because it's a lot of shit, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, like if someone's really in the star signs and you ask them to do that, they're not going to be able to pick because as soon as you start connecting yourself to either of the options. Yeah. The interesting thing is a lot of it can be quite global language. Yeah. Which definitely. is also known as um, inductive language. So it induces hmm. states because it's global. So it's like um, for majority of people, if I talk about um, – um, playing in the backyard with dad growing up. Mm-hmm. People were like, yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember that. Mm-hmm. But they all have their own variation because it's quite global. Yeah. There's going to be a small minority that don't. They go, oh, I didn't actually have a dad growing up or yeah. uh, we didn't have a backyard. I lived in New York or whatever. Yeah. But that's actually, yeah, the global inductive language. Yeah, right. Because then you're able to create your own version of what I'm talking about and be like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And then there's, yeah, thrown, thrown on top of that is like when people do try and remember things, like every time it, it, destroys a bit of the memory and then it's they're just so unreliable mm. as we figured out like in, in evidence and in court and stuff just people's sure. memories are just like like yeah you can believe anything i was watching that some show the other day and it was talking about it was false you no know, people people who had um c- convicted themselves oh sorry false plea what am, I, what am i trying to say when they come in and say yeah i'm guilty but right. they weren't okay. but they had been convinced by themselves that they were guilty. Yeah. And just because of what was happening around them and the pressures put onto them and it just sort of manipulated their head and their own memory. And then it's watching this guy and he's like, yeah, I guess I was touching these kids inappropriately. It's something like that. Sure, it, yeah. It was this teacher. But he didn't. And I was just like, man. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's a really interesting um, take on uh, subjective experience, right? Especially mm. when we move from, from bringing memories or remembering and this is like, there's a presupposition in um, neuro-linguistic programming, which is a sort of a, a sidearm of some parts of psychology. And that is you can always have a good childhood. Mm. It's never too late to have a good childhood. Mm. And it's about going back into those memories and being able to, rather than doing it with a 12-year-old mind, do it with a 35-year-old mind and be able to label it and color it differently and recreate it differently. You might have still had the same hardships, but you can now be grateful for the hardships. It's like, fuck, I'm really fortunate for my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can then end up letting that go and then being able to, you know, not carry that with you in your 30s and 40s, etc. Yeah. Or just even pulling it around you even more and going deeper into sorrow and uh sure, yeah. darker place. Yeah, and healing's you that's, know. That's a, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Now um this is super interesting already. Before we go on, I do have Matt Cooper on the podcast today. <laughs> yeah, we kind of just sort of started <laughs> yeah. kept talking. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so I'm going I'm to let you do a little brief intro in just a moment. Um, I have no idea where this podcast is going to go. I've been trying to catch up with you for a little while. Yeah, and uh, I bad. think we've um, I've mentioned you're the only person <laughs> that I've had a drink with in three continents. 
Yeah, um, I yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, we, I'm, there's still a couple of continents. We I'm, can add I'm to actually going to plan on that. <laughs> I'm planning <laughs> on making go. sure that we can. Well, I'm um, in Africa next week. So, yeah. You know. Well, you know, stranger <laughs> things have doing? definitely happened. <laughs> uh, we, do we have to go to Antarctica? Is that another one? <laughs> we should. We should go to Antarctica. Could you imagine? I've I've been wanting to go. My granddad has a mountain named after him there, Mount Cooper. Because your surname. Yeah. Yeah. And we should. We can go there. Have a drink. That would be actually a bucket list. Yeah, I feel like it should be. I mean, everyone should try and get each continent, but why not? We should definitely. Like, that's that's now made my list of top 10. Yeah, that's Matt. That's creeping up. Yeah, Yeah. that's great. So, Matty, um, you are are a band member of Hands Like Houses. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know who Hands Like Houses are, the the song in my intro to my my, um, mood prep is your song. Well, not just yours. It's like houses. We share it. Um, we share it. <laughs> yes, I do remember emailing you and be like, can I use your song? You're like, sure. If anyone doesn't like it, let me know. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, but give us a bit more of a background of, of who you are um, and where you're at now. Yeah. Well, so I've been playing in Hands Like Houses. This is about our 10th year as a band, as we've been talking about the last few months. Um, before that, I was, I was born in England, made in Australia, which is great to think about. Uh, and live in America now, mm-hmm. but currently here. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically grew up in Canberra more than 20 years, 25 years, so most of my life. Uh, started off in Melbourne, grew up playing basketball. It was my entire life until I was sort of towards the end of high school. And then, yeah, picked up a guitar, saw my brother playing guitar. I was like, that looks pretty rad. And which is exactly what I did with basketball as well. And started playing guitar and got into music heavily and then, yeah, started a band with some of my best pals. And we've been super lucky and still doing it 10 years later. Yeah. Um, Well, 15 years later, but 10 years as the current group. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, dude, I remember going to school with you. And I remember taking uh, taking music as an elective. You were the below me, right? Yeah. And uh, like you would walk around Melbourne High mm-hmm. playing the guitar. Mm-hmm. I walked with you, <laughs> talking shit. <laughs> yeah, like, and this is has actually, much changed. No, <laughs> <laughs> Just more alcohol. Yeah. Better yeah. whiskey and a dog. <laughs> Better whiskey, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's very funny. Um, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and I ended up getting. Um, I'm not sure if you know this. I, 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 you probably do. I've got an E in music, right? Mm-hmm. But, I probably did too, to be honest. Yeah, it's probably... Uh, you know what? I, th- I recall something that all you guys did because you rocked up to the performance and then you played. Oh, yeah, no, because only anything that mattered was the performance, which means anything you did in class was complete bullshit. And yep. they shouldn't have told us that. No. So <clears> um, <throat> I, uh, I, I rocked up and um, I think there was like a keyboard and I went... She's like, just... Just leave. And I got an E for music. <laughs> She's uh, like, David funny. has no musical talent yeah. whatsoever and should choose his selectives, electives more wisely <sighs> in the future. Funny. Was that um, was that Annie Kennedy? That or, sounds familiar. Or was maybe, no, we had an earlier teacher. We had Mitch Burns for a bit and then someone before him. That was funny. Yeah. That is funny. Yeah, it's carred me ever since. <laughs> so, is he uh, in the E? Um, well, I thought E was excellent, but... Um, <laughs> It's not apparently. Been getting them ever since. <laughs> yeah. that's excellent. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's why I've got my recording gear up here so I can beatbox and get yeah, better at it. There you go. Yeah. Now, anyway, so Hands Like Houses, mm-hmm. um, you kind of played it down a bit. You guys have had a fucking mammoth 2018. Has Re- it been your biggest year? Um, <clears throat> it's hard. always hard to gauge like what, what counts as our biggest year. Like, has it been our busiest year? Probably not. Has it been our biggest year in terms of success as a band? Probably. But I don't, whatever the measurements in that are, I have no idea. Um, but it's definitely looking the best it's ever done for, from our perspective. You know? mm-hmm. More, we've just, we're in the middle now, towards the end of our, our biggest headline tour we've ever done. So we did... Canberra, Sydney, Brisbane and Melbourne. Brisbane and Melbourne just this last weekend. And I think Melbourne was, yeah, our 
our biggest headline show we've ever done and it was fucking rad. It so was, what's what's big? Like what's the um, you say biggest? <clears throat> like for us to bring people to our own show, big for us is between, it's been a, a thousand and two thousand people. Yeah. And then, so we, we've, we've played to bigger shows and festivals and for supporting other bands, but you know, it's always like a, this is cool, there's heaps of people here. But you know, I see half of them have no idea who the fuck we are. Sure. Um, and so going to this and just knowing that everyone that's bothered to stick around uh, wants to see us yeah. and is heaps into us, which is we haven't really had to the level that we've had this last couple of weeks. And yeah. it's been it's just been it's really like and it's really lame, but really like affirming for sure. us. Just because you know we've been doing it for ten years and just battling around for 10 years. The first few years was we bought a little bus in America, gutted it, put in little industrial shelving from like a Sam's Club or Costco equivalent. Yeah. Put beds in it and we did like, it was like the equivalent of going around the earth three times just in North America playing shows to like five people or 50 people. Yeah. I remember a show we played in Roswell where the UFOs land and it was a free show and one person came. <laughs> it was free. <laughs> We didn't know we what should to have charged. We didn't know. Yeah, we should have. We didn't yeah. know what to do, so we just sat on stage. We all just played some music. Was it alcohol free at least? Uh, I f- I probably. I can't even remember, man. I, that was like I was twenty one. It was like nine years ago. That's great. Yeah. How good is that? Yeah, that's that's a fantastic memory. So, um, the because I remember seeing a photo ages ago of mm-hmm. you posting uh, of a white band. Mm-hmm. Next to all these big black buses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you remember that photo? Yeah, yeah. I think that that was at a festival in England. You parked next to like Disturbed and Papa Roach, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. All these, yeah, Disturbed. I think Alice Cooper was there. Um, Marilyn Manson may have been there as well. It was, it was a, it was a gnarly festival, and yeah, all of these huge tour buses. Our shitty little white van and trailer parked in between. <laughs> the boys from Canberra. Yeah. <laughs> I remember getting out. We all just looked around. We're like, oh, okay. And then, but hey, it was really easy to find where we'd parked, which is always a problem. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yes, it's, it's swings and roundabouts. Yeah. Yeah. And lots of, lots of, lots of roundabouts. Especially <laughs> coming from Canberra. But, um, yeah. but we, we've always been like, a, like buses are expensive, man. And we're sure. just obviously just like a bunch of dudes from Canberra. We want to, work hard and do the best we can to get the most squeeze all the juice out of our what we're doing so if we need to be uncomfortable and live in a van rather than and get you know a couple of hundred bucks in our pockets at the end rather than going in a bus and having to still owe a couple of hundred bucks in our pockets at the end yeah yeah we'll do that and that's sort of the attitude we've had for the last 10 years we've we've had one crew guy jimmy who's been our sound guy for eight years um basically every tour he's been with us and then everything else we, we were doing ourselves, we drive ourselves, sell our own merch, um, sort of self manage ourselves. And then we, we gradually snowballed that and hired a bunch of people around, but we still end up doing most of everything ourselves. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's just the way it's sort of, it's good and bad for sure. Sure. Well, I mean, like, the other thing is that you, you're able to play where you're at, right? Rather than, um, trying to be bigger than what you are. Mm. Mind you, like... But we can fall into that, though. And sure. Because, you know, we're only looking at it from our lens or from yeah. our perspective. But, yeah, a bit, uh, I guess being conscious of it is yeah. you know, halfway there. The other thing, though, is that, like, in 2018, which I think was, like, fucking one of the raddest fucking things that I've seen amongst, like, all of my friends, let alone anyone, you were the official song. You had the official song the WWE <laughs> SmackDown. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty rad. That's rad. I That so randomly came out of the blue and happened in like the space of a few hours. We got an email <coughs> from someone that was like, WWE SmackDown is coming to Australia. They want to use this song for uh, for all the marketing and the official song or whatever. <clears throat> uh, we just need to know in like two hours. And we're like, well, we're not going to say no to that. <laughs> no way. Can, yeah, shoot it off. And... Uh, yeah, it was mad. And then, yeah, so many friends went to WWE. I think it was at one of the stadiums in Sydney. And he was just swinging his camera around and our songs was playing on the... Yeah, it was pretty sick. That's fucking <clears> rad. <throat> like, yeah. that's that's made it on a different kind of level, right? 
That's like uh, yeah. I mean, at least it at least appears so anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. not, it's not as in made it as in uh, I've uh, bought my mum a house. Mm-hmm. Made it. That's a different kind of make it. No, no. It's made it as in like. I mean, technically, like a fucking large franchise. Oh yeah. Is as you know, which is cool. But yeah, I thought that was pretty rad. I, it took, yeah. I straight away remember playing. WWF SmackDown or Nintendo yeah, yeah. 64 yeah. or Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, that's literally my my only experience in w, in any of the wrestling was playing it on our PlayStation at Joel's house, our bases. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tyrell. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I wasn't fully aware of, I guess, the, like, the, not the gravity of it, but like, how big it was until it started rolling out. And I was like, holy shit, like millions of people watch this. Yeah. And it's like pro- probably our biggest sort of like sharing of, right. of any of our songs. Yeah. We were on a, what else? We got a, another thing last year. It was on the Fox 8. Uh, Super. It's like the, all the new comic hero shows coming out and our song was on the, the backdrop for that. And that was really cool. Yeah. Um, oh, we get played on like Monday Night Football in the States, which is really cool. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's like in just all of the like highlight reels. Which is that same song? Same song. Monster? Monster, yeah. <clears throat> which is strange. It's, yeah, weird. I don't know. We never really have the intentions of like, this song will be cool for this. I mean, it'll, it'll come up like, oh, this song does sound like a bit like a soundtrack, but. Monster was never in our head going, yeah, this would be sick for wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> like, that wasn't a thing. Could you imagine people sitting down trying right to write the wrestling a song, song for yeah. wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine. It's, um, do you know Josh Connor? Yeah, yeah I yeah. saw him on Saturday night. Oh, I did? Yeah, yeah. pretty briefly. But I haven't yeah. seen him because me and Josh went to primary school together and then sort of reconnected later on. He, we were talking about him wanting a, uh, like a song to walk out to and stuff like that. Yeah. And I just like it's always been in my head of like uh, I don't know what that looks like. Do you want like the like the songs that sort of like the broody, angry song, or do you want the like super hype like Mortal Kombat soundtrack? Yeah, <laughs> which is like epic. Fuck yeah! Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, like I, I I don't know what to what to look for. So I'd, yeah. I'd rather just sort of make a few different shapes of songs and be like, what what's gonna get you ready to go. <laughs> get your ass kicked or ideally kick someone else yeah ass. Tono's done really well hey he's done phenomenal I watched his, that last fight he did a few weeks ago on and, uh, one championship <clears throat> yeah and yeah. I like I've never watched someone I know fight and like, I, you know, I've watched I've watched plenty of fights before but no one I've ever known it, like me and Josh aren't like best friends by any means sure. but I definitely know the guy we we're definitely close to primary school but like just watching this guy just like in this fight it's like Watching your heart, my heartbeats accelerating, he sweating, yeah. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. And it was, I don't know, it was like midnight here or 12 30 or something. I was down in Melbourne, yeah. And uh, yeah, I went to bed and I was just lying there, like wide awake afterwards, going, Sure, Fuck, I just only watched it, yeah. <laughs> like, what's he have to go through for that? shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he's been doing what he's been doing for as long as you've been doing what you've been yeah. doing, right? Yeah. Um, so anyone that's listening, Josh Tonner, just Google him, and he's um, he's probably the most prolific fighter to come out of Canberra. Mm. And I, I mean, there's a couple other guys that are, that are really good as well, um, but it, I suppose more so because he still has his whole future of fighting. Yeah. Um, so, so he he's like was, was specialized in Muay Thai, and then yeah, because the, the one championship that was that's kind of the meat. Like I, I don't really yeah. understand. I like, actually not fully sure around one it. championship specifically. It yeah. might be more um, K1 rules. Um, mm-hmm. Somebody on listening might have better understanding. Yeah, apologies um, for anyone that's yeah, yeah. Hey, wanting hey, to pull uh, the teeth out. Jamie, can you just bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Petey, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but because um, uh, they, they have the MMA gloves on um, mm. from memory and um, – yeah, I'm not too sure, but he's definitely, I think, gone into a bit more of that. But yeah. he's specialist. Um, yeah. Have you done so. any fighting of any kind? Yeah, I fought. So, I mean, I, I've done, I started doing Thai kickboxing when I was 19. Yeah. Um, I fought when I was 23. Um, and I'm back doing Thai again now. Yeah. Uh, which I really enjoy. And I went to the fights just on Saturday. That's where I saw Tonna. Um, and uh, which was actually like the quality of fighting has significantly improved. Yeah, and and I say that from a respect point of view, not from like a just brawling. Like it's mm. it's it's the the martial parts are well and good, but it's the art that I really yeah. respect. And, yeah. Um. And so, yeah, I fought when I was twenty three. So, um, 
and uh, fought out in Kuma, um, like on a card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wants it. <laughs> just, just like, oh, glass at. Like it wasn't yeah. like that. I mean, but, um, practice it was a little right. bit like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, so, uh, and, you know, I won that, I mean, I won a fight on points. Um, but uh, it, that fight taught me how um, the difference between a goal and a dream, right, or a goal and a purpose, you could probably think. Mm-hmm. And so I knew that if I pursued fighting, I'd probably become a decent amateur fighter. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I cut weight. I cut down. I went from like 75 to 66 kilos. Jeez. Yeah. And um, I think last year I hit like 90 kilos. So it's sort of like, yeah, right. I'm probably a little that's, lighter now. There's some fluctuations in it. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, I mean, I cut like, I think it was five, basically five kilos in five days. Yeah. Um, Jeez. So, uh, and, and the, the issue for me is that then I really struggled to be all in on my business here and mm-hmm. be present with everything else. Mm-hmm. So, um, I just didn't have the gut so to be able to um, not be all in on the business and, and, you know, what's something that's really important to me, not just the business, but the industry, the career, the, the, the you know, the my partner now, the, the, the content that I put out, all that sort of stuff, um, in order to try and become a good amateur, maybe semi-professional fighter. I just didn't have it in me. Like, that's the reality yeah, of it. Fair. Um, and I, I love I love sparring. I love doing that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and learning, learning about myself, learning about stress ocul- oculation in, in, in a small environment and self-preservation. And, um, I mean, Tonner, I don't know how much the guy weighs, Ringing wet, he's pushing sixty, right? Like, yeah, right. Yeah. And and so the thing is, like, it's guys like him that you go, gentle, polite, yeah. tiny, and then he's he's an absolute, you know, monster. Right. Yeah. And and all credit to him, he's put Time the work bomb. in. Yeah. 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 yeah it, like as well as like, it's got to be the most humbling sport that you can go into. Like, you lose, you lose in that sport, and like. You everyone know, sees it. Like everyone sees it. It's one on one. Like it's not like your teammates let you down. Yeah. It's uh it's either, you know, you got out for it or your preparation wasn't what yeah. it was and, and you get your ass kicked and for a person or a guy, like that's that's a humbling experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's like here's your ass on a platter. And like yeah, there's yeah. so many variables to it as well. Um but I think Definitely going into and doing. I did jits for a while also, and I, I really appreciate that. But the thing is, is that it's one of those really. If you want to get really good at it, you have to get really good at knowing yourself. Mm. Like you can't get good at it without <laughs> getting better at really knowing yourself and yeah, and that humility that goes with it. Um, but also, you'll get found out. Mm. Mm. Like. You know, there's plenty of, I think there's a McDojo life on Instagram just puts all fake martial arts, like no touch masters and all this kind of shit. Right. And like, it's the thing is, it's like, you just get found out. And so, yeah. um, it's one of those interesting. So like the entertainment side to oh, all mate, it's, just, just, it's yeah. the WWE of yeah. martial arts. I like, but it, that sort of shit exists every spectrum. I mean, I have, I have a quick little glimpse in the music world. Yeah, you'll see that sort of yeah. shit, the entertainment music. So what then, would it be? Entertainment music? Well, that, like, yeah, just to bring that word from what we're just saying, it's, you know, be easy pop songs or whatever, just very entertaining music. And then you have, like, two artists or whatever that, like, blues artists or whatever that play this emotional raw music. Sure. Just not in the three minute and three the three minute and 30 second radio time frames that they need to be able to cut a single and push it to the masses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have that certain little nugget of a song for that shit and all the stuff you want to do is just not going to get pushed there. Unless, yeah, <clears throat> unless you're someone extremely famous. So it's interesting, right? Because you'll see, I, I, I see stuff pop up and like, I fucking love Credence. Mm-hmm. Water. Mm-hmm. I love I love Queen. Mm-hmm. Like I grew up in a pub down the coast, mm-hmm. so all that yeah. stuff was on the jukebox, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, you, uh, I've seen a meme plenty of times of like um, Bohemian Rhapsody, right? And yeah. it's like artist, like songwriter, like you know, producer, all that kind of stuff, and it's just Freddie. Yeah. And then there's like Rihanna. And, mm-hmm. You know, work, work, work. And, and then it's like it's, yeah, it's like four hundred different producers and yeah. writers, and yeah, yeah. And the thing is, that for me, and I'd love to know your perspective on this. Like, it looks to me like those people are just playing the game. Yeah, but yeah, like I, I don't know, man. Like, I've learned to not have a strong opinion on any of it because every time I 
I've had an, an, a thought process on it and I've, I've met the person or like I've, I've seen what's really happened. I'm like, oh, I was just an idiot. Sure. Um, but definitely, there's definitely an aspect of playing the game. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. No. Um, <clears throat> you know, pit, there's like a whole industry in the music where there's just thousands of producers cranking out songs every day. They'll go to the studio and they're just going to write songs and they get, they'll have an agent and that agent pitches those songs to Rihanna, to... Michael know, Bolton. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, literally any one of these people. And it'll have either vocals written on it or just like the vocal melodies with mumbo-jumbo lyrics or that little hook, something lame and cheesy that they think going to do well. And then the, the artist or the artist's agent will listen to them and then short, sort them out and go, oh, yeah, this song sounds cool. Do it. And then they'll sing it, put a little twist on it, or just do the same thing and it's, it's a hit. Mm. But, you know, that person probably has a really nice voice that they've worked on for a long sure, time. Yeah, so it yeah. still has that aspect. And I always think of it like, okay, yeah, you want to have a song that you want to push to radio because that's going to get you exposure and it means people are going to come to your shows. You have three minutes and 30 seconds to do that. <clears throat> and like, well, may as well see it as a creative challenge. What can you, what can you do in three minutes and 30? Like, you can mess around with it if, if you want to, or you can pay some schmuck to, to write it right. for you and then just hope that your singer, well, in our case, like I don't sing at all, is you know, a, lot, a lot of the industry is, is the singing and the vocal melody. A lot of, a lot of the, the, whether or not it's going to be successful, if you don't have a good singer, you're not. It doesn't matter if your guitarist, the bassist, the keyboardist, the drummer is a bit shit. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it really doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just it. It almost becomes any other band. Yeah. So it's, it's, to to my experience, it's like the the singer is like the signature of. Yeah. Unless you get like Pantera with a fucking like. Yeah, definitely. You know. I mean, then people are listening listening to that for the guitarist or, yeah. or like or for the drummer or whatever. Like yeah. That that's the market there. Sure. Um, in which case, you know, they could have they could probably get a different singer and people would still buy the records. Mm. But I've always seen it as like a singer in our case particularly like. Tri- Trenton, his voice is like the seal on the envelope. Gotcha. And yeah. it's like, we, we could write, you know, we've done sort of reimagining CDs and acoustic versions and all of this shit. And musically or sonically, it's very different. But as soon as Trent's voice is on it, people are like, ah, oh, it's, it's hands like houses or whatever. Um, and so, I don't know, I just find, I find that interesting because it's like, oh, what freedom do you, do we have to sort of uh, dig around and explore Musically, as long as if his voice is just going to code it over, and people are like their hands like House's voice or singer, mm. um, what what can we get away with doing? But it's just a long learning. Well, it's not long learning. It's just sort of diving into the world to see what we can dig out. Mm. So who were like? I remember bands like Ocean Avenue. Is it, no, it's, <laughs> uh, yellow, yellow card. Yellow card. Yes. Because it's Ocean Avenue. Uh, yeah. And Thrice. Was Thrice another one? Thrice, were, that was a big band for me, man. What school. was the ambulance song they had? Artists in the Ambulance. Artists in the Ambulance. Yeah. So, so who were the inspirations for you then? Thrice was in high school. The I learned every Thrice song on guitar and that was my lessons. That's the only way I learned guitar. Um, and, and that was basically it. And then I, I sat in my house my house in my room and I used to have this really old school uh, program on PC and it was called Tabit uh, and you could type in it was like the biggest noob music theory thing like the, not even theory's not in it at all but like you have <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you know what a guitar tab is but it's like the really simplified version of sheet music sure um, it's got lines on it and it's got what number the fret is yeah. And so you go, ah, oh, fret three on that string, ding. And then you learn a song like that. Um, and this program, you could sort of type, type in a, the notes and write music on this program. And it kind of sounded like a Game Boy. It was that eight bit sort of thing. Right. Um, but a little bit better than that. And that, I just fell better in love. Better than a Game Boy? <laughs> the, better, better than the eight bit music. Right, okay. Uh, well, I mean, I, play, I played that a lot more than I played the Game Boy for sure. But it had, um, it was, that process where and I was like 16, between 16 and 20, of just sitting in my room you know, going ding, 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 type that in the computer, computer goes ding, 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 
put it on repeat while that's going ding, ding, ding. I'll noodle on something and then find something that goes with that, create a little harmony, melody, and then just keep doing that. It was just, just constant jamming with myself mm. on this computer. And that was like the whole, for me, I could, didn't matter, ooh, sorry, I just hit that mic. Didn't matter what other shit was happening in around me or anything. I was like, this is just, I'm zoned in on this. And bef- prior to that was basketball for me. I zoned into practicing like every day out in the basketball court for at least a couple of hours. And then that just transitioned to guitar. And that's mm. all I did. And I can't remember what even got me to talking about this part. But thrice. Thrice. Yeah. So yes, learned every okay. thrice song. And then, then I just, yeah, I never really learned covers at all. When people are like, can you play this song? I'll be like, oh, yeah, I have to listen to it like a few times. But yeah, okay. I can't just, I'm not one to pick up the guitar at a campfire and bust out some melody. <laughs> I like people that can do that well when they can do it well. I have an image in my head like you go, oh, sure. And you go to the car, come back, bring a generator and an amp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> like, let, if we're going to do it, like, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> like it. Do you have your whole team? Yeah, they'll just in the car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Um, in in the van that I, just, I live in a van in the states with my partner, and uh, we we had the solar panels on it, had the whole little setup, a little amp, and I can record and do everything I, I need to in there. But yeah, like that is the minimum thing I'd do if someone's like, "Oh, can you come and uh, you know play some guitar for me, Coops?" Like, nah, because I got to set up my amp, all my pedals, all of these things, so it sounds nice to me. Otherwise, yeah. I'm not there. Sure, I get that. Yeah, I'm not going to just yeah. sit here and pluck away at acoustic because I'm not. It's not going to. I don't know what to play. And I'll yeah. be thinking of you, thinking about me, thinking about what to play. I'll be like, well, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> I just start yeah. miming. Yeah, like, are you miming? You're like, no. You're like, that. That's a Nickelback song. <laughs> no, it's not. I just made it up. <laughs> exactly. Someday. God that's funny. It. So what about, what about um, as you matured um, and you've gone around and obviously I'm assuming you've met a lot of the people that you have listened to when you were younger. Mm, yeah. So that's as, been a strange thing. Yeah, I could imagine. Yeah. Um, so as you matured, who were your inspirations as in like not just the music, now it's like, fuck, those are good people. Like they're, they, you know, they gave us a helping hand or, mm. you know, they, they passed the joint. I don't fucking know. <laughs> like in your pass, second, pass the joint. With, <laughs> um. Snip dog, like are we talking? <laughs> like, like, I haven't really sort of met anyone that I got. I got to think about this because we have to. I still, yeah, I love it. we'll top up. I'm, I still never played with Thrice, which is the thorn in my side. Um, and all the all the boys in the band know that and, and <laughs> know that it hurts my soul. Um, and, but like, there's just little other bands that we've. I used to listen to and that we, we've ended up touring with and and they weren't really necessarily like someone I was really influenced by but I've come to sort of really admire them. It was a band, there's, there's a band from Australia called The Getaway Plan. And oh, the Getaway Plan? Yeah, this is just in my head fresh because Clint, the guitarist, came out to our show on, in Saturday, on, on Saturday a few days ago and... Uh, I oh, fuck, I love that band. I loved his guitar work so goddamn much. And um, were they with you in Germany? Fuck, yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. That was the only time we took like eight years ago. No, not that long, like six years ago. Yeah, five years ago. Yeah. I would have been 24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were both supporting a band from America called Pierce the Veil and someone else. There was there. Um, Sirens, Stephen Sirens, Pierce the Veil, and us and Getaway Plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that tour, that was one of the first times like a band that I really loved was was playing and they were opening up the, the each night and they were by far the best band, right. by far. One of four bands, um, but everything about them was just so good. And then, yeah, and Clint the other day was like, he teaches guitar now and he's saying that he teaches, he, a lot of his students want to learn our songs. And so he's teaching our songs. But I'm like, our songs... Uh, your songs <laughs> no, like not your songs but you influenced us to write yeah. those songs and I'm like fuck that's crazy it's that interesting was- isn't it it's it's like it's the the beauty of like uh, what's the word Art- artistry what, 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 you know mm. the, the artist to be able to express yeah. based off other people's expressions based yeah. off other people and yeah. like there's just this evolution mm. and, it, and that's that's the, the the freedom and beauty in that mm. is yeah I've been like I was having a conversation recently with someone 
And I don't, I don't know what I, how I feel about this yet. And it could be just it's sprouting a lot of bullshit, but it's the idea of like when you're doing something creative is not like, I, I don't think it's okay to take credit for any of it. And I say it because uh, like when you, when you jam, it's the same on the, like the free flow of like any, any, any spectrum of art, you know, if you're, if you're writing poetry, painting, drawing, writing music, you're tapping into that thing that, you know, people talk about that free flow. And so you've got this thing, this information entering your head, which you have absolutely no control over whatsoever, what's going to pop in there. And then so it's come into your head and then you're like, oh, yeah, there's the idea. And you play that or you, you've reached whatever that point is. But there's nothing I did to get that into my head. Sure, yeah. Apart from, you know, maybe be exposed to things I like that leading up to that point that have influenced some little sphere of things that are shitting ideas in or whatever it is. But it's like I – it's not fair to take credit for that because it's just yeah. – it's just things that are popping into your head and that across the board that's like an on any aspect of sort of creating art yeah it, it, it's, yeah. yeah well see the interesting thing around that for, for me listening to it is that that actually allows free flow mm. through you to the next person to do the same thing to do the same thing yeah. because um, you know there's it goes back to like a fucking a Carl Jung quote of um do people have ideas or do ideas have people? Mm, mm. And as soon as we go to the point where like, you know, um, if you say something, I'm like, oh, you're stupid. That's a dumb idea. It's like, yeah. no, but that it doesn't, it's just an it's idea. Not, it's not about, yeah, it's not about being dumb. It's like, yeah. there's something. Let's think about it for a second. Play the ball, not yeah. the player, right? Yeah. Like yeah. We're, we're simply just a filter. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you get this, you get this inspiration from somebody with their artistic expression that gets filtered through your artistic expression mm-hmm. at the stage in life and development that you're at through your understanding. Yeah. But then if somebody listens to that or reads that, yeah, and then that becomes. And again, are they getting the combination of everything? And then like, yeah, 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 absolutely. Like it's, but that that's life. Hey. Yeah. Like that's, you know, we've got fleeting moments to pass past other people, and social media has expanded that. It's increased that. Um, by the way, we're next to mechanics. So yeah. <laughs> um, but the thing about it is that, you know, I've got this idea. It's like, do you? Mm. Or does that idea have you? Yeah, yeah. You know, and what I mean by that is in like um, when we get obsessed by something and I actually think obsessions, if if, if if obsession has me or if I have an obsession, it's two different things. Hmm. And, you know, you look at something like what you spoke about with the guitar, it's like it's you having an obsession of some sort. Mm. And what is that scratching? It's like, what are you going to tell your kid not to scratch that and then, mm. and then go, go get some better grades? Mm. You know, no, no, like, no. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, at what point but, do you yeah. do that or do yeah. you not do it? Yeah. Man, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I don't know. Like, I back everything you're saying there. And it's to the point where it's like, I just wouldn't know how to raise, like, what to tell kids at all these days mm-hmm. of, like, I, I don't know. I don't know what's right. What's the, what the direction? Yeah, if you have a scratch, if you've already figured out a scratch you want to itch, like that's awesome. Yeah, most people never or won't allow themselves to figure out what's what what the itch the scratch is. The yeah, itch. and and some of the reasons, some of the reasons, not not the reason, is because when they go, I want to do that. What what is you spoke before about? Um, what was your lead singer's name again? Sorry, uh, Trenton. Trent. Trenton. Yeah, Trenton. Yeah. Um, you know, is laid over your music. It's like, I want to do this. And then what's laid over that is, what mm. do my parents think? Mm. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. That's always there, yeah. And it's so deep that they don't yeah. even know that it's there, that they go, I can't do that. Mm. And it's like, this is this is the whole, the beauty of going deeper into subjective experience to understand like what's coming. And this is like questioning, like, mm. you know, going induct, like go back to the start of the conversation about inductive language. Mm. It's like, well, why is that important to you? Well, what does that say about you? Mm. And these are all questions that make the person go meta as in above mm. and about, and um, and sort of start to see it. It's like, well, then I'm a bad person. It's like, well, whose voice is that? It's like my dad's. Mm. All of a sudden, it's like, fuck, mm. I'm not doing what I genuinely want to do because I still don't have approval from my father. Mm. It's like, do you need approval from him? It's like, no, he's not even alive anymore. Yeah. And yet, like my dad is, but, you yeah. know, and it's yeah. just like, so how long are you going to be in this position? Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're like, ah. And it's like, are your kids watching? They're like, Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> and so it's just this sort of thing where if we take ourselves too serious, yeah, 
then we become exactly. we become stupid. Yeah, it's very much our detriment as soon as yeah. anything's taken too seriously within ourselves. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. No, I'm gonna make good music. Yeah. It's like no, probably pro- probably not. <laughs> <laughs> not unlikely. No, absolutely. Uh, yeah. um, so f- funny story. So Germany, Germany. Um, what Germany. was that? That was would have been 2013. Yeah. Um, Seven, six years ago. Six years ago, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Mm. Um, I got I got sick that night. Mm. Did I tell you this? No, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. If yeah, we flew back the next day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, like you're sick, Food sick, but poisoning. you were like, I'm out of here. No, like, as in like we were flying home the next day. Oh, okay, right, yeah. And I got food poisoning. <laughs> and, like, we were walking home and I like started vomiting and Andy's like, <laughs> can't hold your alcohol, <laughs> right? And I'm like, oh, we had a few beers. Like, yeah. you know, it wasn't that bad. Um, and then we, we were actually camping. It was a horrible idea. We were camping at some campsite hut because we were there for Oktoberfest. Mm-hmm. And he was like, um, <laughs> yep, <got it. laughs> and, and, yeah, it was like 30 minute train ride, like out of, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it was the worst. Like I had like stuff coming out. Sorry guys, both sides. <laughs> and I had to pay to use the bathroom each time. Oh, and fuck. It I just hate like, that shit, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like, fuck. There's I'm, services where you're like, you oh, just, you're busting and you need like 20 cents or something to get through that little turnstile thing. Oh, oh man. It was the, cause I'm like, yeah, it's coming up. I'm sleeping outside of the tent in on, on the, I just like sweating and then I'm like just running both ends. Yeah. It was horrible. I didn't eat for like nearly 48 hours. Do you, know, do you remember what, what was the chicken? What I think it was um, uh, a, um, a chicken burger. It wasn't chicken. Mm. So, uh, I don't know, a rat burger maybe, something <laughs> like that. I, I think it was a frozen patty that wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. in like the heart of Munich. And um, <laughs> yeah, dude, that was that was a bad. Ex- Mind you, though, like I have never tasted food that has been as delicious mm-hmm. as the breakfast on Qantas <laughs> after not yeah, eating for two or three yeah. days. Get my appetite back. Be like, oh my god, the sausage is amazing. <laughs> like, what is this made out of? Uh, like, that's good. Parts of Jesus in this. Yeah. This is delicious. <laughs> um, sorry if anyone that's religious. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that, that that's that was a like. There's a couple of things that I remember from that tour, uh, that, that that tour of Europe, and that mm. unfortunately was like that was yeah. the seal of approval for yeah. my for my um, Germany experience. Man, no, food food poisoning is just a no bueno, man. Nah, There's nothing you can do. It's just like, you're so helpless. Yeah, you just have to sit there and and get, you just have to take get a rid of it. <laughs> Wait to block out. <laughs> yeah, like, your you know. body's gonna do things because it needs to get rid <laughs> yeah. of things. Yeah, and you have to submit to that. I don't even know why we have carpet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's too dangerous, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. It's um, now at the start. I was I was going to tell you a story about yeah, yeah. the this guy that I came across. Mm-hmm. It's probably the, it's probably up there with easily. I've heard plenty of stories. I've been parts of stories. Probably, definitely top ten, possibly top five mm-hmm. stories. Mm-hmm. And this guy, I mean, he like he was a nice guy. I met him at a friend's friend's barbecue, and um, but he was he was you know he works in marketing. He's pretty uh, um, extroverted, um, but he was it was a pretty normal kind of guy, right? It was Canberra, yeah, it was Canberra, Canberra marketing guy, yeah, yeah. 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 But I, I building the picture, yeah, sure, right. yeah. I don't think he grew up here, um, but either way, he uh, when he was younger, he was it was it was um, <laughs> Catholic or Christian, um, mm-hmm. and went to a camp in like. We're talking like, um, like Wisconsin or something across the Bible Belt in the state. Ah, right? uh, okay. So he was yeah. like, he six. was going for the camp. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we're talking like, not didn't go to Sunday school here in yeah. Dixon. Was like, yeah. you know, if you grew up in Canberra, or not like he went to a Catholic um, summer school yeah, in America. Right. Yeah, and he was like sixteen. In Wisconsin or, too. Yeah, yeah, some place like that. It was yeah. across the Bible Belt. Fuck. Mid nineties. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so their camp, their summer camp. Mm-hmm. Um, had a had a mascot, which was um, which was a mountain lion, uh-huh. a puma or a cougar, otherwise yeah. known, right? Yeah. A, a, like a cat, not a. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 where I live, uh, a man got attacked by a mountain lion last week on one of the trails that we hiked. Oh. But yeah, that is fresh in my head. So yeah, didn't some guy like kill a mountain lion? Yeah, it was, it was in Fort Collins. Yeah, where I live is an apartment. So that guy that did. And yeah, like a week it. ago. I, I didn't. I, I'm not sure if he killed it. It was a. It's, I've seen it on the the reels and the memes of things. So yeah. I assume he probably killed it. He did jujitsu on it. 
Did you not know that? <laughs> no. I, I like, come back to that. I've only seen the links and I've saved them in my little Reddit thing and I haven't I haven't clicked on it. All right, we'll come back to that. Yeah, that, the guy fucking did jiu-jitsu with it. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's a jiu-jitsu crown or black belt. Yeah, I mean, he may as well. Yeah. <laughs> like, you've got a few moments there of yeah, fight or flight. A fucking uh, karate chop's not going to kill a mountain yeah. lion, right? That's not going <laughs> to save you in that moment. Yeah, I'll break a branch. Yeah. Yeah, you can break a branch, dude, but... Uh, anyway, so... Man, um, that noise is coming in hard right now yeah yeah we apologize guys it's uh it's the air compressor next door this is what it's like working in i gotta I got put maybe soundproof this room better just gonna take a hot minute uh, but um hey i've got aircon installed that was that was a that was a super mm-hmm. super effort it's quite nice in here yeah yeah whiskey pooch really aircon. Too, pooch. he's just fucking chilling hey just down here <laughs> He's asleep. <laughs> yeah, hard life. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, so go on, so... <laughs> yeah, so they're... Mark and Guy... Their mascot. Went, went to Wisconsin. Yeah, mountain mascot. lion mascot. Right? No, but it was an actual mountain lion. It wasn't like, you know... Oh! Yeah. Like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, so it is a mascot, but it's an actual... Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like having a... You well, know, and it's there. Yeah. <laughs> it's caged at the fucking can't possibly see anything going wrong <laughs> yeah this is mid 90s and these guys were already yeah, yeah. 10 years behind right yeah, yeah yeah so we're talking like maybe mid to late 80 kind of like thinking yeah. and um and sorry for the the air compressor in the background guys but and so um <laughs> 15 16 year old boisterous dude right mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. now this mountain lion um had been declawed and detoothed Right. Oh. Well, it's mid nineties. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we want we want a, a, we want a mountain lion. Like, we want the mountain lion mascot. So it's something yeah. completely harmless and uh, makes complete sense yeah, yeah, yeah. back then. Yeah. Nowadays, it's like yeah, yeah not yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Well, even then, it wasn't a good idea. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. just didn't know it wasn't <laughs> yeah, a good idea. Now we know. It was I, mean, a terrible I was idea. five. I was here. Everyone Canberra. involved the terrible people going straight to hell. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesus wanted this yeah. anyway. <laughs> no offense again. Fuck. Was it 2019? Is everyone offended? Uh, yeah, everyone is offended. But that's why we need to break through it and just defend. I'm as offended as we can. by how much people are offended. Me too. Yeah, it's really. like incept offended. Yeah. And um, so they got the key. Ah. him and his mate. Great. They got the key for the cage. It, it does sound like a big friendly cat. Declawed, no teeth, probably not having a happy life, take some snacks, pet the cat. I back everything up until this point. But what, you, what kind of snacks can you take? A detooth? <laughs> tuna. Yeah, t- tuna. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How's it going to open the can? <laughs> <laughs> Should have got him a can opener. Yeah. I don't have thumbs. It just <laughs> keeps going. Yeah. Oh, but um, so they, then they go in, right? Mm-hmm. And... Um, and uh, he goes, yeah, so we went in there, him and his mate. Um, and he's like, and just, he's there and he's just patting this thing, right? And it's purring. Mm-hmm. And then next moment, obviously, mm-hmm. like fucking pounces, like both um, paws on his chest, knocks him over. 16-year-old kid, he probably would have been like just under six foot at the time. He was yeah. quite tall, but he was quite skinny. And, um, and yeah, and he's like, this thing just started, like it was purring. It had a paw on like upper chest mm-hmm. and like a paw on his waist, mm-hmm. and it's just gnawing at his stomach, like like gumming it. Yeah, of, yeah. I mean, because if it had teeth, like, it's like so that's like where it's, I, it's going. It's, it's going trying for to it, eat but him, yeah. Jeez, but it's purring. Jeez. And I'm like, how long were you in there for? He goes, oh, like twenty five minutes. I'm like, twenty five minutes. It's like, why did you say? He's like, no, we couldn't get out for like 25 minutes. So he's getting eaten alive. Jesus. But not getting eaten alive. Yeah. Getting gummed alive. Yeah, and he, like he was bruised Mouth and alive. there was a saliva and yeah, stuff I mean, all over Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a big frigging cat. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, like the, the, the cat was also on heat, by the way, they found out later on. <laughs> So, so is he getting eaten alive? Because I'm hearing he's purring. He's on heat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I mention the cat was a, was a female? <laughs> no. But like it was like completely like just gnawing and like and fully bruised, saliva and it. Like the the his mate would try and knock the cat off and <clears throat> like to no avail. Like the cat would just fucking like Maybe. go back. Yeah. And they finally got out of there. And then like three days later, or so, they didn't tell anyone. Three days later. Um, all the people at the camp are like, by the way, um, it is mating season and because the, the cat hasn't been dissexed, just be really careful of seeing male mountain lions around. Jeez. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, I'm like, clearly there's crazier stories, but this idea of being eaten alive mm. 
but not being eaten alive. Yeah. And also hearing the purr. And it was just a barbecue I was at. I wasn't prepared for this information. <laughs> I've got a sausage half in my mouth and I'm trying to treat Petey tricks. And this guy's like, yeah, I was, you know, here are my mental scars. Jeez. Fuck. Jeez. Have you been attacked by an animal? Um, I don't know. Nothing comes to mind. The old, the old, the old uh, swoop by the magpie. Yeah, I've definitely been swooped by a magpie. Yeah. But I mean, that's it's like a, a pass, passing Passage, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say that's, that's like a rights of passage yeah, sort of thing to passage, be Australian. Yeah. yeah, but it's also like I've definitely had like dogs let me know that I should not go closer to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it's always a bit upsetting. Yeah. yeah, it's like you don't know me. Yeah, it's like I'm only here to bring you love. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And affection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you've been mistreated. <laughs> I'm here to love you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm the dog father. That's what yeah. <laughs> you try and claim. But you always kind of hope that the dogs have six cents because you know you always hear that shit. Yeah, dogs can like that dog smelt that dude's cancer. That dog knew they were pregnant or something. You're like, oh, there's something mystical, magical going on behind the scenes here. Yeah. When a dog like really doesn't like you, like, oh, that kind of strikes like a deeper level of something I don't understand. Where like maybe yeah. I'm just a bit of a shit person. Well, that, that's one. But also the difficulty is if they've been abused by someone that even remotely looks like you, smells yeah. like you, yeah. walks like you. You know, yeah. they're going to protect themselves. Yeah. But it's interesting you talk about like uh, other senses because. Um, like one of the challenging things around our reality is that we can only understand it through our senses. Mm-hmm. Like there are sounds that we can't hear, but dogs can. Mm-hmm. So what else is there mm-hmm. yeah, that, yeah. that out there that's either our senses can't even pick up mm. um, yeah. as in we need a sixth type of sense. Yeah. Um, and the senses we only, we do, do, I mean, they, they always include those other senses in the top five, like the balance and the... Right. Whatever the top five, like our spectrum in there is so very narrow in, yeah. the, in the how broad it's like there's that friggin' lobster that can see that has we've got three cones in our eyes that pick up three different colors and combine stuff, and they have right. like 128. And so it's like some spectrum of color that we kind of even imagine because we can't even think of a new color, let alone see any other new colors. But and then the dogs with hearing things outside of our frequency, like. It's very likely that it's just no. Oh, it, it would paint the picture of a completely different reality if yeah. you were to be able to access just a little bit of a broader spectrum of our small senses. Yeah, it's crazy. It's even crazy, um, like how blind we can be to our language around it. Right? When I you explain something, I'm like oh, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And what that actually means? It means that what you said, I use my senses mm-hmm. to understand it. Mm-hmm. It makes senses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we go our whole life never really thinking about that shit. And yeah. then I, one night at 2 a.m. I'm like, oh. <laughs> two words make sense. <laughs> Guy senses. Yeah, even better. Make sense. Which yeah. one? <laughs> it's That's good. That's good. Yeah. 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 It's like it's phenomenal it, um, to sort of sit there and think about how. How often, um, this is this is this is what I'll do. It's like I catch myself just being so fucking re- like reduced to one perception, one point of view, one opinion on something, and I'm just like, fuck, mm. like I'm literally one seventh, seven billionth mm-hmm. of uh, a part of this world, mm. alone animals and everything else. Yeah. It's like, do you, can you recall something recently or anything that pops in your head that you've had your mind be switched? On something like on on any issue, uh, on an issue, oh, like ranging from anything, something that that you recall that you were like, mm, I was wrong. I'm now going to think of it like this. Right. So it's interesting. So it was part part of my learning and studies um, was learning what's called metaprograms. Mm-hmm. Now metaprograms are also known as like thinking patterns, basically, yeah. right? And so. Um, uh, like our senses are actually one of it. So visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, and gustory. That's mm-hmm. one of the programs, filters that we experience reality through. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because then there's 59 other ones. Right. And so um, one of them could be best case and worst case scenario. And so naturally I've run as a default worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. And, Catastrophizing. Um, yeah. yeah. And so that's the reason why though, the, 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 the meta reason behind it is so that I'm safe. 
Mm. And so there's mm-hmm. actually a positive intention behind that. Yeah. Um, but one of the ones that I know I've definitely changed recently, uh, as silly as it sounds, but then I guess that's also discounting, right? Is is discounting. Yeah. So discounting accounting um, is a meta program. Um, and um, the, another way to think of discounting accounting, I'll give a couple of examples. Discounting is, is backgrounding information and counting is foregrounding information, mm-hmm. right? An easy way to, an easy example is not bad. Right, mm-hmm. I, I foreground bad, and I'm not that. Ah, uh, okay. And so yeah. that's an easy that's example. Another ex- example. example is um, so with my beautiful partner, um, I would constantly um, put up uh, not constantly, but I'd you know she's she's absolutely beautiful in, in so many different ways, uh, in all the ways, and I would be like punching, like I would just put up a photo of her and I, and I just put up like a little boxing emoji, right, punching okay. above my weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is another discounting. I'm discounting myself Mm -hmm. in the face of her around a perceived sense of value. But hey, Mm -hmm. it's just like a, it's just an Aussie thing to do. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, no, actually really started to damage our relationship. Because unconsciously, I was like, no, no, she's, I'm punching my weight. At some point, she'll figure that out. Yeah, okay. And so I'm I'm backgrounding me and foregrounding her. Yeah. And so that's something that I've really had to sort of pay attention to and start to really realize when I did it in business, um, when I did it with um, anything. And yeah. it, it's, it's about... Is, it, was, is that like a self-confidence thing or not self-confident, but like a... I mean, if it's terms of the business, is it like, are you that sort of, like that classic, like the, the, it's very, almost very Australian to be like... Tall poppy syndrome, right? Yeah. 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 And, and to... Uh, to or not demean yourself but it's 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 like it's just the, the way we <laughs> the way we sort of carry ourselves is is, is to poke fun at ourselves or poke fun, yeah. to poke our worth poke holes through our worth yeah and so other people don't right yeah mm. Prob- that probably was, that was my reason probably yeah yeah and it served me at certain points where it took the took the limelight off me so I didn't get picked on more. Like I remember that in high school and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so what they ended up doing was developing this this um, I'm I'm not worthy or whatever, which is a which is definitely there's a self confidence aspect. But really understanding the difference between self esteem and self confidence for me was a big thing. So self esteem is self value. Now that book there, the Pearl Beyond Price, mm-hmm. right, talks about the pearl is valuable. The price fluctuates. It's, it's got nothing to do with the value yeah, of the pearl. pearl. Yeah, and that's the same as us. Mm-hmm. Our value, our inherent value for being a human being, the essence of us, doesn't have a price. Mm-hmm. It's beyond the price. Mm-hmm. What someone would pay to spend time with me is re- disregardless of my value, of my self-esteem. And sometimes we have conditional self-esteem and that's that can be definitely a big part of that. Yeah. And then self-confidence is the confiding that I have in myself to be able to perform something, right? Mm-hmm. And so that was a big thing for me, started to see where that discounting came, whether it be in self-esteem or self-confidence. So in business, it was probably self-confidence. With my partner, it was probably self-esteem. Hmm. And realizing That's that, yeah, yeah, neither one of those things are actually true. It yeah. can't be. Yeah. Like how, how, does, how does your value be more than my value yeah. well, and vice yeah. versa? Yeah. 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 So that's something that's probably, yeah, I've changed recently and started to, and anyone that listens to my podcast, I talk about broadening awareness and expanding programs and that's what mm. I refer to. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Because tall poppy syndrome can really impact your relationship. Yeah. And really impact the people that you love, but you think, you know, for me, I thought that I was putting her on a pedestal. She doesn't want to be on a pedestal. She mm. wants to be next to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What about you? Uh, well, what if I... Yeah, had your so, sort of mind shifted on recently? Nothing, nothing, nothing that comes to mind. I only, I only asked because we we're talking about it. I was talking about it with someone a few days ago. And it was, it's just, I think it's interesting to think about well, something you have done it to or something you're, you're leaning into learning more about an issue that I've, I've felt comfortable about or something like that. Mm. But I've, yeah. There hasn't really been a huge shift in my head on anything like that. I've been getting a lot more into the mindfulness stuff. Um, that's been super... Just sort of... You know when something... Have you ever had those, those coincidences where you, sort of, you start talking about something with someone and then 
that topic will just get kept getting brought up every couple of days with someone else and it's like man I keep talking about this one thing mm. and it's like this conversation of like oh what what have you fixed or, or, not, or what have you adjusted your, your mind frame on something has kept coming up with this mindfulness thing um, and just you know the, the classic as you know you know being aware of your thoughts and identifying ideas that just come stumbling in with like waves and knowing that I've got no control over the, the if they're shitty, terrible ideas that could make me feel like poo. But being able to be under being able to be aware that they are just like waves and you know, mm. I can either try and bring in hold it in or just let it sort of go back out and go like that was a shit idea. I don't want to feel like this. That'll go out and then just being aware and trying to breathe. Like I've been doing this thing where I have really shit something that pops into my head and you know you start running through that inner monologue of these conversations so I'm like oh man I'm gonna talk about this next time and fuck that's been pissing me off or so- something like that and then I quickly be like whoa what am I doing like ooh, I'm sitting here cleaning my teeth starting to feel a bit shit because my head's spinning off and I'm just doing this like quick exhale it sounds really lame but just exhale and it's like oh, that that's the thought it's gone out of my head mm. find something else like what are we saying? What's the price of butter? Like, well, whatever. Sure. It's like, I quickly identifying when a thought is really going to negatively affect my head um, and just like, nah, block out of it. Girl, snap myself out of that. And, and just understanding that, like, it's not coming from anywhere in particular. It's just, you're going to have good ideas and bad ideas, happy ideas and sad ideas that will just be popping in and out of your head. It's whatever I want to grab and, think about for longer or kick off and sure. ex- literally I make a like a like I blow out my nose type of thing that's what I've been doing the last like couple of weeks and it's, it's been interesting yeah has it been working I think so yeah I'm like oh what am I doing like I'm, yeah I'm in the shower shampoo in my head thinking about something that's making me feel miserable and it's like it's the start of my day I don't want to start my day about something that's not here yeah yeah, yeah it, that's unless it's, it's literally just your head exists. that you feel miserable. Yeah, <laughs> it's like rubbing my eyes. Like, oh, no, I'm yeah. not gonna let it affect me. Yeah. But like, did my hair want this? <laughs> I didn't ask it. Do you consent? <laughs> just shut up and take it. <laughs> um, but like, it's yeah, figure, figuring that out and being able to just push out those ideas has been it's been really nice. And that, that was something I should have learned a long time ago. But yeah, I, I was aware of it. I just wasn't exercising it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting sort of thinking about it. It's like, well, how would I have known to do it back then? Mm. Yeah. Like, you know, I hadn't heard someone else talk about it yet. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. The mindfulness is pretty very – I find mindfulness very interesting, especially the – and it may not be how you're using the words, but the, the, maybe the marketing of it, right? And this, like, mm. mindfulness and, you know, uh, it's, yeah. there's definitely, you know, this sort of – Calif- almost Californian style uh, sort fucking of. Fucking LA mindfulness, man. Yeah. That shit – yeah, that shit pissed me off. But, but the interesting thing about mindfulness is that people are trying to empty their mind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's not about yeah. mindfulness. <laughs> it's about mind emptiness. Yeah. yeah. I see what you're saying there. And, and like I said, yeah. it may not be how, like, I'm, I'm not saying it's how you're using the word specifically at all. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hadn't, I've never thought about that. I mean, like if yeah, I was, the, if I was going through meditation is, is emptying yourself yeah. of, of thoughts. And it's, it's becoming the observer, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you see that like clouds, you just see them. Yeah. As opposed to being them. Yeah. Mm. There's that, uh, I don't know where it comes from. I'm going to, I'm going to definitely going to butcher it, but the, it's like a monk who's standing in, I used it before with the, the waves. He's, sta- he's standing on his knees at the, the shallow ends of a beach and he, He's talking about all of the water being ideas and things flowing in, constantly flowing in, which really is quite accurate of what it kind of feels like if you try and think about um, ideas popping in your head. Yeah. Did you ever do that, that thing at Melbourne High? Did you ever have Shane Hart as a teacher? I do. Teacher. Yeah. I do remember Mr. Hart. He had a, he had now, a I'm going to stop you for two moments. Yeah. What we're going to do is have a quick 10-minute break. Yeah, I'd love to pee. Yeah, cool. And then we're going to come back and it gives me a chance to put the video up so we can go back again. Feel that. And I want you to start with that story. Shane Hart, English. Yeah. Shut. Okay. <laughs> I got to pee. So. Good man. Oh, boy. Downstairs somewhere? Yeah. Or? Yeah. It's... Uh...
it's like. <laughs> you got a little friend. We're back. Yeah. And you got a little friend. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, PD is spelled P E A T. As in that? a PD whiskey. That's great. That is good. So, because I wanted a Scottish Terrier. Um, yeah, well played. Which a good Scotch yeah. would be a good Pete. Yeah. So it would be a little Petey. And um, anyway, we've got a Schnauzer. He's German. So I should have called him food poisoning. But, <laughs> yeah, um, he's a bit vicious. He's totally he's He's been there. He fell out of there. He was sleeping <laughs> half in, half out. So he's a pretty good dude. Now you were talking about um, Shart. 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 Oh, Mr. Hart. Um, yeah, look, I don't know what was the catalyst of the conversation, but I remember we had a punishment in class and it was kind of like a dictation thing, but you had to, it was kind of when I, he, he probably just had enough of everyone messing around um, and everyone just had to keep writing words. Like you weren't allowed to stop. You had to just keep writing whatever thing just popped into your head, even if it would repeat itself uh, gradually or whatever. There'd be something that would just like it's just running through that that free flow of thinking of right. like, now I'm thinking of a cow, now I'm thinking of corn, now I'm thinking of a can of peas, now I'm thinking of a dog, now I'm thinking of horse, now I'm thinking of hay, now I'm thinking of lettuce, now I'm th- like just things that aren't related, but they're just popping. Devil's lettuce. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to it. Oh my god! <laughs> um, but like just just those things that are popping in, and they're popping into my head. I'm looking at it inwards whatever it's like whatever door that shit's popping in is just unknown to me completely unknown where that shit comes from mm. and I, that fascinates me whatever the, the, the but that's linked back to that creativity thing because it's coming from the same spot it's like oh I, like I play a note on guitar and then something's going to tell me to go oh maybe it goes do you I'm like yeah, that's mad. But that's coming from nowhere. It's not me mm. formulating that idea. It's coming from the same thing of just like, like we'd do it for like half an hour and just be writing like, you know, T-shirt, shoe, dog, just like whatever thing is popping in your head. And that exercise I've always think about it like, that's, that was packing into a little strange part now yeah. of like, of something. And the idea of just com- like, when will I stop? Will I, what hap- if I stop writing things that pop into my head, what's happened then? Like, is it stopped working or do, am I just repeating things or am I focusing too much on one aspect of one idea that just keeps going through? Like, you know, teething dog, teething dog. Yeah. <laughs> get his toy, get him to chew the toy. I had his toy back. I don't think he may have eaten it. Mmm. I feel like, like you know, you know that that thing when you see little puppies and you want to squeeze or whatever. Um, that's what he has with his like. It'd be like pain that kind of hurts, but feels really nice, and he just needs to squeeze and bite yeah. down things. Like I feel, I feel what he's going through right now. Yeah, I, I, you can only assume, hey. Yeah. He's just like it's like stop biting. He's like, <laughs> yeah, like oh, I just need <laughs> to like, yeah. And like he like he'll do like little gnawing things. Yeah, yeah. And then I recognize that some of his front teeth have gone. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, fuck. I mean, yeah. like. I, I get it now. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't get you in trouble now. You're yeah. just doing what a yeah. Like his brain didn't have to deal with oxygen five months ago. Right? Yeah, exactly right. And here he is like learning to sit mm. for a treat. Like it's, and you, you, put, you put this puppy side by side as a you know, five month year old human. I mean, this dog is far more capable of yeah. surviving. Well, he knows not to poop inside now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't mean he doesn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> he just knows not to. Knows he shouldn't. Yeah. And he's like, well, I thought you might want to pick this up. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's actually, I remember reading about that or hearing about it. That's, it's due to the size of the brain. So the larger the brain per the size of the actual <laughs> um, organism, the mammal or whatever, mm. animal, um, the longer that period. Hmm. And so, um, <coughs> especially because when humans are born, like they, can, they can't hold their head up. Yeah. Right? So, because um, the brains are so big, so to speak, in mm. comparison. I had this thing... I was talking to a guy recently at a at a bar. <coughs> it was in Texas. Is it a dive bar? It was a dive bar. You love the only type bars. of bars to go to. He he was an apprentice at a taxidermist for a while, and he was yeah. It was a weird conversation to stumble into. This is a great conversation. And why didn't we start with this? <laughs> he was he was. Uh, 
It was talking about the process, and they'd borrowed some uh, some parts of their process from the Native Americans. And the Native Americans had figured out that the brain size to the animal, every time, 100% of the time, uh, so this is when they're, <laughs> so quickly back to it, this is when they're, they're uh, preparing the animal's death and they're going to skin it or whatever. And there's all that f- fibrous, uh, so they, they skin it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pretend it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they skin the animal <laughs> and then <laughs> they put it up on the wall. Oh, um, and good they, to see you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Pichy. <laughs> Uh, and they want to they want to peel off that fibrous tissue and use the fur, and they figure out the brain matter. If they get the brain of the animal and mash it up, and then spread it on the hide, every time it's the exact amount that they need for that animal's hide, right? Um, to to clean and prepare it for the next that and a bit of pee, but the brain yeah they just get the brain, mash it up, and it just spreads evenly over the hide, 100 percent of the time. And then they can prepare it for taxidermy or whatever they need to do. And then they, when they need to uh, clean the bones of the animal, they put it in this box and get these little beetles in, and they just eat dead flesh. And then it just cleans the skull, the the bones. Probably. I'm sure you, there's humans that would do that. Yeah, but did like, you see that guy? He got his leg cut off, and he was like, "Hey, can I keep that? Like, that's mine." And they were like, "Yeah, well, it's your leg." And then he made leg taco for his friends. And they all, they all knew what it was. It was like, hey, when are you going to get another chance to eat human meat? I got leg. But That's, wouldn't it be like a, a sick part uh, of the leg? I, I, no, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't disease or something. It was, it was something. He had to get it cut off. Kept Didn't leg, like it. Made tacos. Yeah. And I wanted two right feet now. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So it's and yeah, he and his friends. Would you eat it? No. No. Why? What's, no. Uh, what's stopping you? What's stopping me? Yeah, like uh, what's I'm encouraging not, not, me okay. to do so? <laughs> what's stopping like, me is not the question. I don't know, but like the same thing is like when you go to another country, you want to try a new cuisine or something. Like yeah, that cow's tongue or something. Cow's tongue. It depends how weight. well I knew the person. Oh, like it like, depends if like if he was a good guy, but if he was a, like maybe like he's got to be either end of the spectrum, right? Like, like a shit dude. You, like if you AJ was either. like, hey dude, I'm gonna die in a couple of weeks, and I had this leg amputated. A lot of meat that leg too, so. I'd be like, I feel a part of that leg. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I would, I would heavily consider at that point. Yeah. Uh, if it went the other way and he would, like the person was a complete shit bag of like Hitler's leg. It's like, yeah, you don't, you don't want to eat a shit person's body. Well, maybe, maybe Hitler's. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, oh, like I, as like revenge. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But the person in between that's just like, hey, I'm Joe. By the way, I've got a bit of leg. Would you like something? I'm like, <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can't, so, can't really find a point to argue on you with that. But I'm probably, the yeses are like a 15% at this stage. It's from a negative, you know, that, that's a, yeah. you, you've, you've managed to get me from a no <laughs> to yeah, a... Yeah, so now you're, you're, now you're wiggling yeah. back. Though, it so. depends on how many, um, how many, definitely how many whiskeys I've had. Yeah. Um, how, you know, yeah. and, if, it, and if it's served on taco, like yeah. you're talking, like it's got dressing and... I feel like if spices. I had to go to jail for something, I came out the other end... It would be more like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But I haven't had that kind of filtering yet, mm-hmm. which I'm totally happy with and, and yeah. not keen to go. Fair. So, and, uh, um, I hear jail is pretty shit. Uh, is that a. It's like, it's like, well, I saw something today that said, um, um, getting kissed on your forehead when you're sleeping is, is like one of the cutest things that can happen unless you're in jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Changes everything. It does. <laughs> it really changes everything. Oh, so, man. but yeah. Now you spoke about the devil's lettuce before, and you were you were surprised because off off camera, off microphone, mm-hmm. we talked about. I think I used the example of drugs. Um, the I don't know what we talked about. It was like the people that are either for his chewing his thing. Get it out of your mouth. People that are either for um, pill testing or um, yeah, I yeah, and like that's a big thing. And it's just for everyone listening in Australia at the moment. They they wanted to do pill testing for um, festivals, so it's kind of mm. like. Uh, I got I got these pills in, so now that I'm here, can you test them? Mm-hmm. It's not le- it's not illegal now to get them tested. I'm going to take them anyway. Yeah. But if I, you caught me five meters that way, then I would be yeah illegal. I mean, that's what started the conversation. What, one of one of my friends, Bluey, he because we were talking about it the other night at dinner, and we were under the impression that 
like all of our parents had one view on it and we all had a different view and it was just quite the contrast of a gener like the generation gap really had sort of um just set the contrast between mm. the different opinions but you were saying you know you were listening to two people that do take pills the other day and they both had different opinions on it yeah um, i think maybe one of the guys has stopped for a little while yeah um it hasn't for a while um Maybe he had, I'm not sure, but they were like, but they were also really direct people. And yeah. Really okay. global. So it was like yeah. a global direct conversation around a point of yeah. view. It's yeah. like neither one of you are listening. Yeah. Okay. You're simply well, arguing. Yeah. I mean, arguments. Bluey, my, my, my Bluey, his example, uh, I don't want to butcher this, but he was just like, simply like the question put to a parent. I mean, because that older generation is the people that we're having to deal with in politics. Is they're 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 all there's that little top half top like third of Australia's population are quite old and all in this sort of traditionalist sure demographic of people and like when they move on to the next phase whatever and the young our younger politicians come I really do think it'll be a completely different picture but until then this is the conversations we're going to need to have about whether or not we can have pill testing yet yeah. The little uh, dude, can you take his little thing off? Just what's unbuckle he, it. What's he eating? He's eating. Oh, it. God, I didn't even see that. Get that out of here. You can just unbuckle it. He'll, he'll, um, he'll, he'll be take naked it then. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, so, yeah, so you're saying when Kyle gets in politics. Yeah, no, okay. So, but like the conversation was like, all right, so if I, were, if I were to say to you, if you're anti pill testing, I'm not sure what you are. It's like, hey, man, I'm going to a festival and I'm going to have a pill. Is it like, can I, do you feel okay with? The idea of me being able to test it to make sure it's it's I'm not going to die from it. So if if you were asking, would I prefer if you tested your pill that you are going to take? Yeah. Then of course I would prefer that you test the pill. Yeah. And but the idea being like I'm not going to go do that, but there's it's someone else's mate. Or in terms, if I was asking my father about it, he would be my you know my dad's of the opinion where. Like the, the classic sort of opinion of like, oh, it's illegal. We can't do that. But if I was to go to my dad, I'm like, hey, dad, I'm going to go to this festival and have this pill. Can I, like, how do you feel about me having it tested to make sure it doesn't kill me? He's obviously going to be like, that's fine. Like, he's obviously, sure. he's obviously going to be like, I really would want you to test it. Probably be like, I don't want you to take the drug in the first place. But if I was saying, I'm going to have this drug. But the difference there between, it's just someone else's kid that's going to do the drug. Sure. And they don't just, have okay, that. I hear like, you. Yeah. It's got to just, we just have to. Is it the same person that has partial part of their leg gone? <laughs> maybe. Maybe, I feel like maybe he, that's how that I leg I feel like he's happen. at a point in his life that he doesn't need a test. <laughs> like he's been the test, right? He has been the he's, test. Let's call him the canary. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I get that point. And I, like, I, I really haven't looked heaps into it, mm. enough into it to really sort of gauge but either you, way you've, you, like you've you've been you've been in the, the events you've you know the you know the people that go and pop pills what what percentage of the people do you or like do you recall that would pop pills would get them tested do you think it's people that take pills regularly do you think it's people that would take pills maybe like this is their first or second time and they're like maybe shit there's a tent over there i can go get this tested it's going to tell me if there's something in here that's going to you know what man I, I, I think it heavily will come a lot from parenting like even like when I what I mean by that is like whether they're risk adverse or not, if they're mm. trying to prove something, right? Like if mm -hmm. if some younger younger brother has a fucking, you know, is a pretty good guy, but he's got this fucking chip on his shoulder to prove something to his older brother mm. about being hard, he's mm -hmm. not going to get it tested. Mm. Like there's so many factors that oh, go into okay, it. Ah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I and see so, what you're saying. Yeah. You know, like he might be like, nah, dude, whatever. Like I'm trying. He's he's got this pretend rites of passage into masculinity right. around being when that's not hard at all that's just ignorant and stupid yeah from where i sit yeah. but at the same time it's like the having it there is better than not having it there in, in a simple form what's the flow on effect of that i don't know yeah as in like is it really going to be sort of the, the final straw and like every, all the kids are going to start taking drugs yeah, is it that? Is it will it help like, increase the the amount of people that make them in their in their um, you know second bathroom mm. around parts of um, that, ideally it'll make it harder for that though because it's going well, to bring out all the the sort of non authentic 
components to the drug. Sure. But then, you know, there's, there's the other side of the argument that's saying that the pill testing that they want to do isn't as accurate as we all imagine it to be. It's not the little magic test that says this is all okay for your head to take. It's going to say it's probably not that bad for you. The other thing, though, is that um, what if it gets tested and the person still ODs? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I don't know. I, I really don't have a strong stance on it because it's something that I haven't really delved into and crazy yeah. amounts. And if it's not something that you're exposed to, then... Yeah. I, like... And I'm, I'm, like, yeah, I'm, not, I'm okay with not having a huge, very strong opinion on it. It's not something I think about or have to deal with. And so, I'm like... Uh, like oh, but I do understand, like, hey, man, if it's going to save one kid's life, then, like, fucking do it. And there's an educational thing about it, but the educational isn't about just the drug. It's like, mm. why is the person taking it in the first place? And yeah. it's not to say that life should be void of all drugs or, um, um, you know, uh, what, what's another word for it? Um, um, psychedelics or anything mm-hmm. like that. I'm not, not saying that because it's, it's too global an answer for such a detailed problem. It's not even a problem, right? Mm. So... But there's, yeah, like the example there of a younger brother trying to prove something to the older brother who's trying to prove something to the dad. Yeah, yeah, Right? right. Like, like yeah. what, are you, what are you going to tell them? Oh, the, the drugs are bad. So, so yeah. like, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. They see the drug as an excuse or as a vehicle to be able to be proven otherwise. And maybe yeah. the older brother's going through his own shit. So he's like, mm. hey, good job, bro. Mm. Good work. You fucking got smashed on the weekend. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. And that's fair. To be honest, like, I, I haven't really witnessed that much of that behavior and the people I know people, people I know I know that will take drugs at a festival will be we're going to a festival like let's get a bit strange and throw ourselves into this place where music well the music whatever's happening completely sure. consumes us and like they're coming they're coming to it from a very innocent no yeah innocent level yeah. of like I want to I'm not at work I'm not at school I'm going to this festival I want to love everything. I want to love everyone. And I'm going to take this little pill. Oh, and there's a little tent over there. It's just going to just double check that I'm not going to kill myself with it. Yeah. I'm like, I, yeah, but but maybe it's probably very naive of me to think that that's a lot of people doing it. I don't Who knows? know. Yeah. I, and I, and I, that's weird. Same as me. I just don't have that crazy stance on it. It's just like, well, um, and the reason why I probably don't have a crazy stance on it is because whatever happens will happen. They're like, yeah, but every vote counts or this. It's like, yeah, I'm aware of that. Mm-hmm. But it's also like, you know there is a big festival culture, and and like that's fine. I, I you know, I, I appreciate that, and obviously you're in that space. And Man, like I, I detest Australian drinking culture. I think sure. we have the, it's just disgusting. Well, what parts of it, right? This part, you know. No, no. Going back to what you were saying about the the the, the drug taking, like that that same sort of uh, mental. You'll just keep doing it. So you <laughs> yeah, keep yeah getting stop it dropping. It. You want to chew it? Stop dropping. But like the. Like the, the guys that go out and just get totally fucked up every night off drinking is sure. just and it, it's I mean it's definitely an English thing as well. Yeah, it's in the states, but you know we're doing it at eighteen, they're doing it at twenty one, or like out in the city in public places sure. they're doing it at those ages. Um, and we're just like, I, I nothing of their drinking culture is attracted to me whatsoever. Now it's just you know. Boys turn into animals a lot quicker, and it's it's just a cesspit. You know, you go out, you go out into Canberra Thursday night, like you, you know, we all know what we we all know what to expect if if you find yourself unwillingly and unluckily at front of Moosehead for some strange unknown reason on a 11 p.m. midnight on a Thursday night. That wouldn't it be hasn't so strange, changed in ten years. Maybe twelve years ago. Yeah, like but yeah. It but it's it's today. this it's the same young kids. Drinking sure. Hey, it's matter alcohol. the book there, right? A hero with a thousand faces, mm-hmm. right? And so that's the hero's journey by Joseph Campbell. Yeah. And uh, have you familiar with it? Yeah. And so the idea is that the story and the the way the story unfolds is exactly the same. It's just that it's Batman. Then it's the Green Mile, then mm-hmm. it's the next, you know, Matrix yeah. and so on and so forth. It's the hero, same story with a thousand different faces. Yeah. And so that's the same thing, you know. I, I definitely went through my um, out Wednesday night, yeah. out Thursday night, same. Friday, Saturday, and make sure I recovered well at the club on Sunday at the Pokies yeah. and, you know, um, with good <laughs> yeah. roast, by the way, and, um, and a couple of schooners yeah. for those that, you know, a couple of beers for those that aren't living in Australia. But... Um, but before in, in the break, we we're talking about um, 
drugs and hence where this conversation went as well, even though it started with shot. Um, <laughs> and you were, you were extremely surprised about like the fact that I haven't, I haven't taken anything before. Mm. Um, obviously I've had Panadol. I, uh, I'm drinking whiskey right now. Um, I, although I feel like whiskey and maybe pills are a little bit different. It's like, <laughs> it's like there's probably a lot more craftsmanship that goes into it. Maybe they should take the craftsmanship that goes, well, this is a pill with a, it's been. <laughs> we've aged it. Yeah, we've aged it in <laughs> sherry casks, yeah, you know, yeah. but like. I mean, yeah, you look at some crazy mushrooms or something. I guess. Sure. Yeah, there's parallels there. Yeah. yeah. And so. Um, do, do you think like when someone like yourself has never taken drugs, you're more you're more cemented into that because once you take one drug, this idea that you know the the never have taken any drug or anything like that <clears throat> is really quite a like a it paints quite a picture of someone whatever the, exactly the colors are there I'm not sure but you know so if you were to have your first joint and then you can't say you've never taken drugs or whatever oh, I don't care. Like th- that, that's not a thing. No, I always, I always, sometimes for somebody I, it probably would be. Maybe if yeah. I was younger, it probably would. Maybe yeah. it was an award that I gave myself when I was younger. Yeah. Because I definitely grew up around a lot of, you know, I had mates that would sell coke and, mm-hmm. you know, sell heaps of drugs. And I was there. Yeah. Like I was there when things got sold. Yeah. You know, uh, I think like I would have been for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wish like I wish at times I'd been as, as capable as you to be like, nah, fuck that. Like ah. and have it around me. Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I suppose also for me, like, I did Thai kickboxing. I worked in a gym. Mind you, there's still, like, the fitness industry is prevalent of fucking mm. drugs, yeah. let alone performance enhancing drugs to mm. the next thing, right? Every, like, even, like, changing my melanin so I seem more tanned to mm-hmm. get more mm-hmm. attention on Instagram so that I get more, <laughs> you know, um, uh, sponsorships so yeah. that I get, you know, I can have my online program and Man. then I can be seen as like, a, and this goes back into all the coaching that I do is like, so, so where does that all stem from? Like what, what is that behavior? What is it attempting to feel, so to speak? And, you know, I don't know. It's a question. It's an inquiry, but, mm-hmm. um, but the whole drug thing is just like, look, I just haven't been in a position where, um, I, I mean, a pill, I, I'm pretty safe to say I'm probably never going to have an ecstasy pill. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I would say you're not missing out on much there. Yeah. Coke is not really on my radar. Mm-hmm. It's not something that I'm interested in. I know people, I mean, I remember an ex-girlfriend of mine, I was like, well, we can't be together if you keep taking it. And so yeah. she's like, you know, she stopped taking it one day. She's had like this little bit of sherbet underneath her nostril. <laughs> I'm just like, it's like, nah. But look, so that's not really on, but like it's the most pure. It's like, whatever, like that's fine. Mm. I, I, you They're do, very short term. You do what you do. Sure things, yeah, right. You know? Um, and, what and, about what about when you see like you know uh, p- people you admire that talk about say you know, having <laughs> having that change of that shift of consciousness brought on by a bout of uh, trippy mushrooms or LSD or something like that? Like, um, are, you, are you intrigued in a different way? Where you're like I'm in your head, your your narrative is like, man, I'm never going to do that, but I'm so like, I wonder what it would do. Or is is your narrative like? Should like oh, would I want to answer that? that question. I'm gonna put little dude downstairs to go to the yeah. toilet. Time out, yeah. Pooch. He gets time out. Um, and uh, and come back. But but while I do that, can you answer that question for you? Like what that is for you? Like what's your experience with, you know, um, seeing your first experience of seeing someone go on a trip, mm-hmm. right? Or hearing their trip. Mm-hmm. You yeah. come on, dude. <laughs> out of you, bitch. Poo time. So, what's what's you saying? Asking, um, I tried to stall. Um, you're asking what goes through my mind when people talk about. Mm. Is it just like is it like a like someone saying like, have, you, have you ever skydived? I haven't. No. Yeah, me neither. But like, say so someone's talking about <laughs> skydiving, and you're like, I'm like, oh, man, that sounds cool. 
probably not that keen to do it unless like I was sure. really it was I found if you want to use there. skydiving as the analogy it's like that sounds really cool hmm it's probably I I, wouldn't I, I would it. like to skydive but not at the moment like I don't have okay, an yeah. urge to go out and book it mind you that's actually a thing for me with skydiving it's like yeah if I if I'm in Brazil and over the beach I'm like fuck yeah I'll do it mm-hmm. and part of my brain mm-hmm. is also because I'm like if something goes wrong at least it's a beautiful death like <laughs> yeah right yeah, rather yeah. than being out in like kuma like <laughs> yeah. or like somewhere yeah, random out, I'm gonna have a yes. yeah that's right Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and like what poor cow that i hit or something like that yeah. <laughs> so so there's the there's certain drugs um uh such as marijuana or um you know shrooms uh, ayahuasca that definitely are on a um if it feels right, I would. If I was on Joe Rogan podcast and he's like, "Would you like a joint?" I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah. of course I want a joint." Wouldn't Just, you be scared though? Like if it was like, "Oh, I am about to be thrown into possibly quite a deep end because I've never done this, and now it's you'd be on a public forum." I just want you to know that you earlier time, in this so. podcast, you asked me if I'd eat someone's leg as a taco. <laughs> <laughs> so, be I don't know. I, I would be like, "Look, I'm happy to, you know, I, I don't know. Possibly, I have no yeah. idea." Yeah. So, but this, yeah, yeah, you, you haven't you haven't cemented your 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 place in some sort of attitude towards it. No, so where I've sort of sen- there's a couple of things like like um, psychedelics and and drugs are probably two different things, right? For sure. Or yeah. um, you know, uh, liquor and beer are two mm-hmm. different things, sort mm-hmm. of you know, same but different. Yeah. So there's definitely a couple there that I'd like. Yeah, if, you know, and I'm also happy going to my um, my uh, what's it called. You know, death. Mm-hmm. Um, not not having. Uh, yeah, if I don't, yeah, I don't. I can't imagine it. Yeah, but like, man, I wish I'd taken that acid. Oh, yeah, well, maybe. Like, like, like maybe. Yeah. Knows, so. You know, so and like, I, I was with you guys in Germany, and, and I joined mm. went around. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, you know, disclaimer. I don't know if you took it or not. Like, you know, whatever. I like, probably so. definitely did. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, like nah, like I'm cool. Like I just didn't yeah. feel like it at that point in time. So one of the yeah. one of the things I am very sure is that I won't be peer pressure if I do. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Uh, I'm just way too stubborn. I'm just like, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's going to push you immediately in the opposite direction. It's more like if we were saying, no, don't have that joint, you'd be like, well, fuck you, I will have a bit of that joint. <laughs> oh, interesting. I probably would be like, you're like, at that at that point, I'm aware of what I want to do or not. Yeah. And I would have made up my mind. And so uh, if you're like, yeah, you won't do this, it's like, yeah. you're not cool enough. It's like, yeah, I'm not cool. Yeah. It's like, I don't need your approval. Yeah. Not yeah. you specifically, I need your approval, yeah. but uh, other people in the world. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Petey's approval, I need that. Yeah. Otherwise, Strive, so it's that kind of thing. That. Yeah. So the socket, ayahuasca, that's probably something that I would be like. That's a whole kettle of fish there. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, as far as the drugs are concerned, <laughs> the drugs. I would, I, would love, I would love for your first encounter of any of that realm of, psychedelics to be ayahuasca like that's fully diving into the deepest yeah. end <laughs> like, like but, sure but like yeah. it, maybe the purple it could be like the the clearest and the clearest way to go into it yeah well it's like being given a thousand dollar bottle of whiskey and then going drinking johnny red mm. <laughs> you're know, mm-hmm. like what is this stuff yeah. it's like oh it's a bong i don't fucking want this <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know so yeah i definitely haven't ruled that sort of stuff out and um um i i don't it's the same thing that we mentioned before. If somebody has a joint from time to time, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like, mm. I've I don't have any qualms around that. If somebody had a joint at work here at my business, I'm like, that's not okay. Mm. Um, mm. In the same way, uh, if somebody drank here and then try to work on the floor or something, mm-hmm. like you know, same yeah. sort of thing. It's um, they're not showing up for the client. That's that's probably the biggest thing, right? Mm-hmm. And in service of someone. Yeah. That's the service. We're a service based business. Yeah. You are no longer in service of them. Yeah. Um, okay. But that's, people go, "What about caffeine then?" Yeah. And you're like, "Oh, that's interesting. Where where do we draw the line?" Mm. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to make an objective line over all these subjective things as well. So, as in, that affects people differently. Mm. Um, Especially like you know, in Colorado, where I'm living now, they've they legalized a couple of years ago, and the the drop off of addiction to painkillers and a, a lot of a lot of drugs that. <clears throat> essentially completely unnecessary for a, a large proportion of people that are now on taking CBD oil for chronic pain or sure. smoking weed or eating weed for anxiety or depression or 
whatever the issues that they're going through. And it, they're just unhooking themselves from the tether of a whole bunch of addictive mm. pharmaceutical drugs for the, you know, something that just grows in, the, grows in the ground, much like caffeine. I think that's where that sort of parallel comes to. It's like they both are very organic and very just like, there's a tree, there's a, a tomato plant, there's a, a cannabis plant, and, you know, there's caffeine or soybeans or whatever. Like yeah. It's, very There's an ecstasy plant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's in a bathtub. No, but like yeah. but these 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 things are just straight from the earth and just sitting around and, sure. and mushrooms as well. Yeah, and it's like, well, uh, and, I, and I feel like you know there there needs to be a little shield around the very organic things and and then going into the pill testing conversation where it's like, oh, we hammered all of these different things into one little tablet plus some ant killer or whatever. Like yeah, that's it's different there. But when there is that conversation of people that take you know all that smoke weed or have that stuff daily, it's like it's just I I'm always just interested in it because it's like they are just that's doing whatever it is for their head and whatever they can. I mean, they're not trying to justify it because it's not something they need to justify. It's just a behavior that they're working through each day. To it's interesting as well. Get like on with the day. For for a lot of cases of anxiety or depression, and this is not playing it down, it's something that I talk about a lot, is a subjective reality. Mm. And so taking something objective to change the subjective, same as confidence. I don't have confidence to talk to female alcohol. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. it's just like, mate, you've got some things here that you could potentially address to, to in, in, in layman terms, be a better human, you know. Um, why don't you work on that during the process? And so, you know, for example, like the way that, not every single case, and I have to look at that each time, but with anxiousness, most people don't have anxiety. Mm. They do anxiety, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's a pattern that they run. It yeah. doesn't mean that it's not debilitating for them or anything like that. I'm not taking that away from it. But a lot of the time it's – and it's not about thinking positive. Like I'm not that way inclined. Like it, it's yeah. thinking positive means that there's a negative. It presupposes there's a negative and it's trying mm-hmm. to avoid it's, – it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So it's not that. What it is is understanding the majority of the time what happens is that there's an external event and then we have thoughts or feelings about the external event. And then we have thoughts or feelings about the thoughts or feelings of the external event. Mm-hmm. And then we have thoughts or feelings about mm-hmm. the thoughts or feelings mm-hmm. about the thoughts or feelings of the yeah. external event. Only if it's someone that's able to dive into any form of reflection. Because people don't reflect. At well, all. it doesn't mean they can't. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely doesn't mean they can't. It's just they don't. Sure, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. sorry, yeah, that's a. Yeah, for sure. Well, self reflection allows self awareness, which allows self questioning, yeah. which allows self actualization. Yeah. But we, we can't self actualize if we're not self reflective. Mm. Because how can we become aware of whatever it is? Mm. So that's called meta state, mm-hmm. right? So it's a state about a state, no longer a state about an event. Mm-hmm. You know, you talked about it just before when you're brushing your teeth and you started meta stating about something in the future that's not even here. Yeah. And yeah. you're, you're actually exhaling, you're, you're making a, like a, a purge, an yeah. actual physical purge of taking that thought out. Yeah. It's, it's one of the patterns that I, I would teach to somebody. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, like you're able to do that. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I probably snaked the idea of something. I just I wasn't aware of it at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But, and, and the thing about it, though, is that um, everything we've shared today is pretty much that. Mm. Yeah. It, you know, okay. it's, and all I have in this head is things that I've... There's other ideas. Like yeah. The idea of like, there's no such thing as an original idea. Like you, you're just combining yeah. other ideas. Totally. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, the, the internet is such a good example of that at the moment because uh, you see it. Um, I saw something recently where somebody, someone's mum drew a, like a, a painting of something. Mm-hmm. And then someone drew a painting of her, uh-huh. and then mm-hmm. someone yeah. drew a painting of that. Like, yeah. and it kept yeah. on going, and it's just like that's that's exactly what it is. It's yeah. like here's their painting that I'm painting. Yeah, and then somebody goes, oh, and I'm gonna paint my painting of them painting the painting. Yeah, yeah, and like that's actually a really good example yeah, of it how is, it is that we think. That is a yeah, a very nice way to put that. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's, and that, that's like everything I'm sharing. It's like these are things that I've read, that I've heard, heard that I keep on hearing my microphone, that I, <laughs> that I, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's not like I have come up with any of this. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. And again, that goes back to the, my idea of, of not my idea, someone else's idea of not being able to take credit for anything that we do now. Because I, I don't know how, I don't know what it, that would look like, yeah. being able to 
create something from a place where I just knew I wasn't take, drawing influence from someone. Sure. And here's where I think is actually beneficial to take credit is taking credit of bringing it to life, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so being like the device to, sure, to, yeah. to, to create it. And, yeah. and the credit I'm talking about is not like, I brought this to life, check me out. It's the credit of being able to go, um, you know, like I, I've actually invested hours of my life into breathing life into this thing for people to actually then be inspired so that they can then create ideas about my idea. Mm-hmm. And so like I think like the painting, like people had to paint. Yeah. But at the same time they're doing that when like, you know, it's just so when they're exercising, whatever it is, it's like, oh, I've got these ideas and you've built this little thing and whatever, that in itself is then like, Almost like a selfish, uh, not not selfish, but it's it's a self pleasure of them. They they're getting fulfillment out of creating it themselves. Totally, and, and so like, it's cool that they've done that. Mm-hmm. Whether or not someone else would have created a different way to interpret those ideas would would be would could could be a possibility. But it's like ah, oh, so you just took ten years to construct this. Or it took six months to construct this one story or something that ultimately hasn't changed the face of anything. It was like it, your journey through that was what I sometimes think of our journey through things of creating stuff. is It's very selfish. It's like, mm. oh, it makes me feel good. I don't know why, but I, I like I like when the, the pieces of the puzzle go together and then I get to look at it and be like, cool. But it's like that whole process is 100% selfish. Like His, you know, there's a million things you could be doing to do things that actually matter. Well, this is an interesting thing from, from my angle. I 100% agree with you. I think it's it's selfish and selfless mm-hmm. because in doing that, in, in creating Hands Like Houses, in creating the music, in investing the time, in sitting in your room and, and listening to Tabot. Is that what it was called? <laughs> yeah, that would be. T- it was Tabot, but Tabot sounds cool. It's way better. <laughs> should have been Tabot. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, Tabot. <laughs> French. <laughs> so in that circumstance, like, as selfish as that was, you now have young kids going to the getaway. Mm-hmm. Like, it's completely selfish. But they no, but like. Selfless, rather, sorry. Yeah, yes. But had I not done that, there would have been something else to fill the void. There would have been someone else doing it. Well, because they would have been selfish. Yeah. Right? And so this is the thing is that in order to be selfish, we have to be selfless at the same time. Yeah, but we shouldn't be celebrated in our self in our selfishness. It's like I, I shouldn't – I should have – I get to play – literally I get to play guitar at home and kind of do whatever the fuck I want. I get to travel. Uh, I'm not making money, but I'm surviving – comfortably enough to be able to travel and play guitar and then go tour, whatever. Mm. It is definitely the most selfish last 10 years that I have ever, well, I've only had three decades, but it's, it's the most selfish of those three decades because it has been me, you know, essentially getting my rocks off creating for myself and yeah. then, and then, but then putting it out there and, and yeah, you know, you, you get, you get people coming up and being like, Oh, like, your music's helped me in, in this way and that way. If it wasn't my music, I, I 100% am confident that it would have been someone else's music. It, it possibly would have been, yeah. but it wasn't. It wasn't. So this, that's the key. Been. It possibly would have been, right? Yeah. And so I, I'm not trying to change your mind at all. Yeah, I, I, and I'm also, yeah, on, on that, it's like this is just where my thoughts are. At the moment. I'm not mm. cemented in anything. I'm just like I'm still figuring yeah. out So what so I think the, about the, it. The, one of the issues with a lot of Western culture is that we actually sh- we shun selfishness, mm-hmm. right? But to be self-ish is simply being able to feed the things that the self is hungry for, mm-hmm. right? And so it's like, what kid would you not tell that to? Now, mm-hmm. a kid playing mm-hmm. a kid playing um, Xbox and not doing anything with their life. Now, I'm not saying because there's Xbox leagues and all that kind of shit. I'm like a kid simply <laughs> just playing, yeah, exactly. right? There's, there's fucking variations. A kid simply playing that and not doing things and that kind of that, I don't think that's selfish, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same as masturba- masturbation. They're just fucking themselves, mm-hmm. right? Literally over time. It, mm-hmm. It's a different variation. And that could be in a whole range of things, punching cones and then playing Xbox. I'm just mm. really basic, mm. right? Mm. Now, the ability for me to go, hang on a sec, like my podcast, 10 minutes a day, 
it's so I can air my thoughts. Yeah. 100% selfish. And mm-hmm. I'm fully aware of the impact of that. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not, not I'm like, oh, this, this week someone will message me and say thank you. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not the reason why I started it. Mm-hmm. And it's also, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. But the, the actual beauty behind selfishness is the ability to express the self. Mm-hmm. And if we had mm-hmm. more people expressing self, true, honest, unfiltered self, then more people would express self, mm. true, honest. And yeah. so that becomes, it becomes almost selfless. Yeah. Definitely. But, you know, like, so if I was to try and imagine my most beautiful, futuristic idea of the most civilized place that, you know, we could all be in where, you know, everyone's got enough of what they need to sustain themselves. No one's battling away. And then... Communism. Yeah, everyone's but, poor. but yeah, but <laughs> not everyone's poor. We all got enough. And, you know, people have freedoms to be like, Oh, maybe I can try and be creative and express, you know, creativity is the expression of the human spirit, Where, however sure. you want to paint the idea. And like, so everyone's doing it. Then, then it's at this level where it's like, it's like you're doing it to ex- purely express things. Um, but that's not what we're doing now. We're doing it to express things, but also in a way where hopefully in some way or way or another, we get rewarded in the future, whether it be financially through it or, because we have to, otherwise I can't do it. Sure. Um, but yeah, like the, we're not at that point of this. Well, whatever, whatever you know, the most civilized and beautiful form of society is. Are we all working? Oh, none of us working. Are we working on ourselves? Are we working together as a community? Mm. And robots do all the hardship. I don't know. Mm. Like you know, you know, if we were to look down at that tunnel into the future where AI and robots are doing all of the shit that we don't want to do now, is that going to leave us to just express our human spirit creatively? Is that is that the space left over for us to do? Yeah. In which case, if we're all doing that by whatever that even looks like, then then we're at the level where it's, it's not selfish. But now when we're doing it, when there's, there's jobs that need to be done on the planet and the shit that needs to be fixed and I'm sitting here playing guitar and like, jerking off my guitar every night sort of thing I'm like I can't see it as like a a, a part that's worth anything yeah I um, I I definitely disagree with that um, and, I, and I say that with I'm all glad, my- I'm glad because I like I, I don't I don't know how I don't know I don't know the other frame to look at it sure with all my love right I, that's what I, I disagree with all my love in the sense of like um, the I operate from the space that only two things matter memories and how you contribute right um, and so you look at like you know let's look at classic artists such as David Bowie uh, Freddie Mercury mm-hmm. um, you know um, there's, there's there's heaps there's heaps and heaps and heaps it's like well, did they not contribute did they not help people make memories were they selfish it's like they, they literally allow themselves from my perspective to be an expression of self mm-hmm. and in doing so we allow other people to do the same thing and in so, like, for example, like, one of the reasons why I'm fucking so proud of you guys, I, I got an e-music we established <laughs> as ex- excellent as I am. I'm going to be, I, I decided not to pursue that. I'm not the one kid playing the guitar and asking Bane, mm. Jake or whoever it is from the getaway plan to yeah. like, yeah, I'm not doing that. But what it is, it's just like, fuck yeah, I'm so proud of those guys. And mm. they path the way doing something that they love, mm. right? And so what that does, and this is why everyone has a candle, not a light. Because a candle is a fire, and mm-hmm. I can you can have a candle that has a fire on it, and I can have a candle with a wick, mm-hmm. and your light, your fire can actually. That's the analogy, right? Yeah. The other thing is that you can't be selfish without being selfless. It's, yeah. it's you can't be optimistic without being pessimistic. Mm-hmm. You have to be the both at the same time. Mm-hmm. And and what I mean by that is that let's say let's take someone who let's say depression or um, heavy sadness, as I, I often mm-hmm. refer to it. Um, and the reason why I say heavy sadness because a lot of people uh, they're sad about being sad about being sad, mm. and and when it's depression, that's I'm I am depressed now, and that's it, that's all over. Whereas this this idea of heavy sadness is like, well, if I had heavy sadness, I can shift my emotion, right? And it's not mm. as easy as that. I'm not going to go into it today, but but my point around um, oh, I lost my train of thought quickly. Um, so to be depressed is let's 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 put it in simple terms. I am pessimistic about how the world is. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm depressed about how the world is. Yeah. And I'm pessimistic about it. And I'm simplifying it, obviously. But I can only be pessimistic if I know how good it could be. Okay. I can only be pessimistic if I'm optimistic about how it could be. And it's not that. Mm -hmm. Right? And so that's where being selfish allows me to be to give. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's both it's both sides yeah and so I think it's the same love and hate are the same thing mm-hmm. you both own parts of my emotion in love and or hate and so the opposite of love isn't hate the opposite of love is indifference it's lack of emotion mm. and so yeah I, 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 I actually when somebody pursues their selfish endeavor of of feeding the soul I'm going to call it that I'm like fuck yeah you selfless fucker <laughs> like like good, whatever that is, painting, whatever. Mm. Now don't paint. Go be an accountant. Off you go. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I get. Like, I feel. I, I feel like if I was to sit and be like, oh, so what's the alternative of sure. nothing? I'm like, oh, like where where am I sitting there? I'm like, oh, like do, you, do I have, does everyone have to be a doctor? Like you know, like to be like the the superficial like non selfish thing, which. You know, any doctor's going to be like, the load of shit because plenty of people get in the, in the medical field just to make a lot of cash or to impress their parents. Um, and the, the actual journey isn't brought upon about like the, the, the authentic want of helping people. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. But I think we'll have to finish this up yeah, very soon. It's it's chaos the, there's chaos downstairs. I mean, the people scream here in the Petey bath. Petey, <laughs> Petey's got a friend. Guys, we are done. Maddie, thank you very much for jumping on the it was podcast. My pleasure. I hope I didn't bore anyone that listens to it too you much. were very selfless <laughs> I have thoroughly enjoyed it I hope you're safe to drive home yeah I might sit here for half an hour yeah and you're welcome <laughs> to yeah indeed indeed but uh, anyone where can they find out more about you and Hands Like Houses uh, Hands Like Houses everywhere on the internet that you find music uh, give us a listen come to a show for Nia yeah. Um, yeah come and have a come have a rock have a, have a beer come to a show even if you have never heard of us you'll have yeah. a good time yeah. That's the aim anyway. Yeah, good. Yeah. Very good. Uh, otherwise, that's that's kind of it. I usually yeah. sign off with, until next time, and peace and pizza. See you when I see you. Kick that. today in the dick. <laughs> Slay the dragon. We'll see you guys soon. I love it.